Hi. Hi. Welcome to Why Are We Like This, a Heart Stopper podcast. I'm Ashley, she, her. And I'm Alyssa, she, they. And today we're here to talk about episode eight, Boyfriend. <laughs> I have so many emotions. I, I do too. I, I can't believe that we're on Boyfriend already. Yeah. It's a quick little show. Yes. It's sad. I want more. <laughs> yes. Full disclosure, Ashley and I were texting about this earlier, and we have both agreed that we're very likely both going to cry at least once <laughs> during this recording. Um, <laughs> so buckle up. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So season one, episode eight, Boyfriend, was written by Alice Oseman and directed by A. Ross Lynn. And this is the episode where, as the boys and girls meet for sports day, Charlie's on the brink of breaking it all off with Nick while Elle and Tao share a special moment. I'm already going to cry. I know. (laughs) I know. I'm already over here just like trying to hold it in. Already going to cry. Because it's, I mean, it starts off super emotional too. So they like, from the get go, it's, it's, uh, it's hard. It's like, hey. But at least we know where it's going so we it's Mm -hmm. not gonna be sad the whole time yes we start off in charlie's room and my note says sad charlie at the drums staring at his phone (laughs) yes also this is a nut like the final piece of my favorite sweaters that he wears (laughs) i love this sweater i love the colors i love the pattern top notch Excellent sweater. But Tao has not responded, but he read it three hours ago. And that hurts. <laughs> it does hurt. It it hurts so bad. And Charlie puts his headphones on and he starts playing the drums, which is really cool. Um, <laughs> I want this drum kit. Yeah. I don't play the drums, but I want this drum kit. It reminds me. <laughs> you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of the drum kit from like rock band. Yes. But mm-hmm. like functional. <laughs> yeah. The full electric set, yeah. Yeah. And he is, like, taking it out on these drums, like, getting it. Yeah. To the point where Tori has to come in and she throws (laughs) something at him to get his attention, which speaks to me deeply as an It's her shoe. It's her shoe. (laughs) She takes her house shoe off and throws it at him. (laughs) Mood. She's having none of this. (laughs) I... Listen, I, I wouldn't either. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> it is loud, even when, when it, like, because they kind of give us both, right? Mm-hmm. We get to hear what it sounds like to Charlie with the headphones on, which is, like, the full drum sound. But then we also hear it from outside of the headphones, which is just, like, a bunch of, like, loud banging. <laughs> <laughs> So, it's, yeah. It's a really cool edit as well. It is, yeah. Also, the um, just like the camera work in this whole scene, mm-hmm. like later when they're talking, how it's like on the other side of the drums and it's like slanted through them, like very good camera work. And Tori tells him that he's being too loud and Charlie cannot fathom <laughs> that he's being too loud because he has his headphones on and therefore <laughs> no one else can hear it. <laughs> I do love, though, that Tori is just like, you are, in fact, hitting the drums very loudly. (laughs) Just like, yeah, it doesn't matter. It's still hitting things. (laughs) It creates noise. Yeah. (laughs) And Charlie does the really great, like, little brother (laughs) non-apology. Yeah. Sorry, then. With, like, a little shrug. Mm -hmm. And she's like, "Uh, are you angry at anything in particular? Or have you finally decided to have a rebellious phase? Which is a great line. It's a great line. I love it. And Charlie doesn't answer either question. He just said he just asks if Tori heard about Harry's fights with Nick and Tao, which he claims mm-hmm. were both his fault. And Tori immediately calls bullshit because as we know, and as she knows, that she wasn't even there, but she's like 95% sure that both of those fights were Harry's fault. Which I still think is generous. 95%. <laughs> I feel like 99%. <laughs> I, it's yeah. Harry Green we're talking about. It, this is true. But yeah, I think she is just trying to give that little bit of benefit of the doubt because she wasn't there. Yeah. And this is like kind of when you can see her face like starts to get really, really serious. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's Tori, so her face is always serious. But like yeah. you can really tell that she's like – you know, 
she knows something serious is it's going in the on. eyes it's all in the eyes yeah mm-hmm. and her mouth the way yes. her mouth just like mm-hmm. turns into a tighter frown <laughs> it's very subtle but it's very effective he tells like the whole story about Ben without saying that it's Ben. Mm-hmm. And he kind of says that he liked this guy, but that said guy, I'm just going to say it's Ben. We know that he's not telling using the name, but I'm going to for the sake of clarity. So, like he liked Ben, but Ben made Ben made him feel like he was ruining Ben's life and that he didn't want to be around Charlie and that he didn't even want Charlie to exist. Uh this part breaks my heart. Because then he he goes into um, that Nick has lost all his friends and is getting into fights because of me. And he thinks that maybe he does ruin people's lives and it would be better if he doesn't exist. Uh. Tori is all of us in that moment. And she just says, you're not ruining my life. And she just gives him this big hug. She like lurches forward too. You no, know, she like as soon as the words come out of his mouth, she lurches forward and grabs him. And I am glad that we're getting this scene over with in the very beginning. Same. I know. If it was oh my god, it's like thinking back to when we recorded me and I was just like dreading the whole time <laughs> getting to the end know, of that episode. So at least now it's like the beginning is really tense, but then it has a happy ending. So we're getting through it. I, I love I love this moment though because Tori she knows exactly what the logical conclusion of Charlie's thought process is and she's not even gonna let mm-hmm. him get to it. And I, I love that. She just hugs him, says, You're not ruining my life, and just is there and I'm already crying. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. And then she offers to make pizza for dinner and that's like the last thing that charlie wants right now yeah and so he's of course like i'm not very hungry and i might just eat later and she just says okay and she keeps holding him she's such a good sister such a good sister i love her so then we get our final title card and i love it of season one it's so good so good my my note for it says this one makes me happy because i love the ocean yeah (laughs) (laughs) also it like the title of it being boyfriend is like mm-hmm. just another gentle little hug from Alice being like, okay, I know that scene was hard, but here's a here's a little promise in the title card. Here's a happy ending. <laughs> <laughs> and then we go to Truem and Isaac and Tao are sitting down in class. And I think this is a math class. I think we've seen them in this class before. Yeah, this is the and bisexual people exist Best class. <laughs> it is. Um, the seat between them, which we know belongs to Charlie, is conspicuously empty. Um, and I do, before we talk about the scene, have a side note. Um, <laughs> I don't know what this classroom layout is, where it's like, it's all of these like tables that are like two chairs mm-hmm. per table and they're all just in long rows and mm-hmm. it make like watching it makes me feel claustrophobic <laughs> like all of the kids are like trapped in their little like section I'm like how yeah. do you how do you get out of there <laughs> well I mean the teacher walks in the middle so there's got to be a little bit of space yeah but oh, it just it feels so cramped and yeah it's definitely a tight space I don't like it <laughs> And I, I mean, I think too, like just the way that it's shot, because it's like very tight in on the the three seats. But yeah, I don't like the layout. <laughs> we also, we haven't had an Isaac book in a while, because um, we haven't had a ton of Isaac. Uh, so I was very excited. We have two books in this episode, which I, I in my brain, I've been calling it Isaac's book watch, but I don't think I ever said that out loud. <laughs> so, uh, I don't think you did. <laughs> I'm saying it now. Um, he's reading Gender Explorers Are Stories of Growing Up Trans and Changing the World by Juno. I do not know if this is Roche or Roche. It is one of those two things. Um, if it is not either of those two things, someone please let me know. (laughs) And it is a collection of interviews with young trans people. And I love that. And I also love yeah. the color design or the cover design of this yeah. book. It's mm-hmm. a very aesthetically pleasing cover. So good job to the person who designed that cover. <laughs> yeah, his books don't always catch my eye like in, until I like think about it, you know, but this one always, I'm always mm-hmm. looking at that cover. It's very colorful. Mm-hmm. And the like font is, yeah. is good. So then Charlie comes in 
And Isaac, like, sees Charlie come in, and then he looks over nervously at Tao, and then he, like, kind of half smiles yeah. when Charlie's, like, going to sit down, and then he kind of just looks like he wants to throw up. He's like, shit. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to be in the middle of this. I don't envy Isaac at all in this scene. At all. Mm-mm. Because, ugh. It's just an, I've been in situations where two friends like it's like a group of friends and two of them are not on good terms at the moment. It is uncomfortable. Yes, it is. <sighs> yeah. And Charlie starts to like just try to talk playfully to Tao. Mm-hmm. And Isaac says he said he doesn't want to talk to you. And I am a little disappointed in Isaac for, like, getting involved in that because it seems a little out of character for him to participate in this feud. See, you know what I see it as? I think it's more for Charlie than anything. I think that it's just like, hey. Like like, putting him out of his misery. Yeah, exactly. Because, like, Tao is, like, stock still. And Charlie is just, like, looking at him like – looking for anything. So I think that for for Isaac in this moment, it's just kind of like, yeah, let me put him out of his misery a little bit. Let him just kind of like get to a place where he knows where everyone's at because I think that Isaac knows that would be better for Charlie to kind of know what the lay of the land is rather than being like a sad puppy waiting for Tao to say literally anything or even look at him because Tao won't even look at him. Yeah. Yeah, that's totally fair. So then uh, the teacher for this class comes in, whose name I didn't write down, um, and he says that he's been told to remind everyone about Truem Higgs Sports Day, which is coming up on Friday, and that everyone needs to sign up for an event by Thursday. There is not enough of a reaction from the students (laughs) in this class, one way or the other. Like, I, you hear Sports Day, I am expecting there to be a combination of celebration and lamentation just like yeah ugh. like the kids who yeah. are excited about it to be cheering the kids who don't want you to be like moaning and groaning no one reacts i feel like this i don't know like where this is at in the day i think probably early on because they go to lunch later but um maybe like right after form and like everybody's still super hyper and all of them are like chatting and no mm-hmm. one's really paying attention so i don't think that uh, anybody really processed what the teacher is saying at this point. They're all just like fucking off, basically. <laughs> totally fair. So he says, you know, maybe we could all do the javelin together like last year. And this is when Tao finally speaks. And he's like, you're on the rugby team. Which, like, of course he couldn't keep his mouth shut about the rugby team. <laughs> if, any, if anything was going to get him to say something. Yeah. And that just, like, baffles Charlie. He's like, so? Like, what does that have to do with anything? And Isaac, to the rescue, tells him that the rugby team always does the red versus blue rugby match. And so they can't do the same Stuff which is like weird if the rugby match isn't until the end, why can't the rugby players do other activities as well? Yeah, it's weird. A lot of the organization of Sports Day, I have questions about. Um, my notes about it are like when we're actually at Sports Day, but some of the mm-hmm. some of the rules, and maybe it's just like I don't know if this is like a UK thing because like I've done like because I my schools we've we always had Field Day. Um, which yeah, kind of had like a similar true. concept, a little bit less intense, mm-hmm. a little bit less involved. Um, <laughs> we didn't have javelin <laughs> or no. like shot put or high jump or any of that shit at my my school's field days. So I don't know if this is like a a UK thing. I don't know if this is kind of like an yeah. over dramatized version of a UK thing. We had a kickball match usually. And then, like, sack races. Tug of war. (laughs) You know, like, yeah, tug of war. Yeah, that was like a three-legged race. (laughs) Yeah. And, like, we do, like, foot races. So there'd be, like, a 100-meter dash. Um, As we got older, there was, like, a 400-meter, like, stuff like that. But never never organized sports. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, weird. There wasn't, like, a soccer game. Yeah, like the closest it would be like kickball or dodgeball or yeah, 
Yep. And also the kids, like nobody was that excited. Oh, like these yeah. kids are fucking stoked about this. Except for <laughs> when they find day. out like, about it. Except for when they find out that they need to sign up for their <laughs> event by Thursday. <laughs> um, I will say though, like it is a reminder. Like he's to- the t- teacher says that he's been told to remind everyone. So maybe there is a little bit of leeway on the reaction because it's not the announcement yeah. that it's happening. Right. But still, yeah. <laughs> but hearing that being on the rugby team will keep him back from participating in anything with his friends, it's really like it hits him in that moment. Like he could kill two birds with one stone. He can have less time with Nick. And more time with Tao if he quits the rugby team. Yeah. And so then it cuts to him walking down the hall just like on a mission. (laughs) Oh, the scene. It hurts. It hurts so bad. (sighs) And Nick is like so happy to see Charlie. And Charlie just looks like he's going to throw up. (laughs) Yes. And then I feel like I'm going to throw up. And there's a continuity error that I have to point out with the boys that were like walking in front of Nick. Oh, is there? You know, he's like he's like giggling with them or whatever, and then he sees Charlie and he stops. And so then it like cuts back to like it's supposed to be the same shot. We go from Nick's perspective to Charlie's perspective, and the boys are just gone. <laughs> they just disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't catch that one. I have one later. I have one later that I'm very excited about. Nice. But- <laughs> Um, so Charlie runs into Nick and Nick asks if he wants to get lunch. Charlie says he can't and like runs off. And his, Joe's line delivery of sorry, like it really gets me every time his, his voice like wavers. Yeah. He's like, sorry. And then then he runs away and I'm like, oh God, oh my God. And the way that Nick just stares down the hall after him, just like what the fuck just happened? (sighs) Heartbroken. Uh, he's so worried and this like usually when i get sad i get like really nauseous <laughs> so like at the beginning of this with like charlie and tori i'm like nauseous and sad but something about nick and charlie like almost breaking up <laughs> full on hurts like i get a pain in my chest that goes all the way out to my fingertips oh, like no. and it's so weird i was like paying attention to like doing like body checks during my emotions. Oh my God. (laughs) And like the pain always hurts worse in the fingers that aren't even there. (laughs) I'm like, it hurts and I can't even touch them. (laughs) It's so weird. It's interesting that it's like, just like with like emotion. Uh Uh-huh. Phantom pain is a fascinating thing to me. (laughs) Like I never really had the, the like pains, but I could tell like right here was like itching and I couldn't like there's no finger for me to scratch it so I get itches a lot but this is like a different kind of feeling for it to go and for every single time it goes out to my fingertips all of them and this is the first fingertip pain of the episode but there are several <laughs> all hurts. right this episode hurts <laughs> Ashley phantom fingertip pain watch uh 2k23 <laughs> <laughs> we've got Isaac book watch we've got fingertip pain watch we've got cry watch uh, <laughs> we've seen this mural before and I keep forgetting to note it down I love the mural yeah. in this hallway with like the waves in like the Alice art style and it's got the leaves yep. I love it it makes me happy I want it yep. on my wall Alice please come and yeah, Alice. put that on my <laughs> bedroom wall Thank you. <laughs> um, Charlie goes into Miss Singh's office and tells her he thinks he's going to quit the rugby team. And despite the fact that he says he thinks he's going to quit, he's very much everything about his tone and like just like everything in the conversation is like, you're determined to quit. You just mm-hmm. are speaking in Charlie. Yeah. Like he's not there to ask permission. No. Also, I love the arrangements of like the basketballs lined up on the wall. Yeah. I <laughs> like I've never seen that before. And so I thought that was like super cute and an interesting way to like save space. Yeah. <laughs> it's very aesthetic, but it's also like the most organized gym teacher office I've ever seen. Yeah. Yeah. Also, I want to know what the rest of that sign says. 
<laughs> next to missing. <laughs> it just says you can't beat someone who, and then it's covered up, and so you can't see like what the rest of it says. Right? Okay, huh? <laughs> I'm very intrigued to know the rest of that sentence. Me too. Maybe that'll be the question. We'll just like prompt people to complete this sentence. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fill in the blank. <laughs> yeah. But Miss Singh is like distraught that he is quitting. Yeah. She asks if the boys have been giving him a hard time, if she needs to talk to anybody. We all know that she knows the answer to that question already. Like she knows what's been yeah. going on. But Charlie insists that it's just him and leaves. And Miss Singh looks really upset. And like, I, I was thinking about it. And I, I think that there's like part that she's worried about Charlie, part mm -hmm. that she's disappointed because she's seen growth from him. And then part mm -hmm. that she's wondering if there's anything she could have done differently to keep him from quitting. And it's like, I feel bad because it, is entirely nothing to do with her. I mean, like, I, there are things that she could have done in terms of, like, Harry and things like that. Mm hmm I love the next scene. I do, too. It's great. <laughs> I love any Nick and Tao one-on-ones, though. Mm hmm Good dynamic. I also, I really love, there's, like, this overhead shot of the picnic tables, and it's a blue picnic table, a yellow picnic table, and then a blue picnic table. Mm hmm And it's great. And I also have another note on the set here. <laughs> it says, I can't believe I haven't talked about the mural on the wall by these picnic tables yet. <laughs> yeah, the the kicking. Yeah, I feel like as I was taking my notes for this episode, there were a lot of things that I was like, this is your last chance to talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> They're probably not going to be at the school in season two. <laughs> it's a really well-decorated school. Yeah, it is. It's a beautiful set. But so Nick walks up and he can see Tao sitting alone and there's like a quick moment where he hesitates of like, uh, Charlie's not there. And but then he like pushes through and he's like, OK, I'm going to go ahead and commit to this and I'm going to go sit down. And of course, Tao is immediately rude. <laughs> <laughs> of course, it's Tao. It's Tao when faced with Nick and no supervision. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> True. I didn't write down what exactly it is that he says he says um where's charlie oh, yeah and nick says i thought he would be here and he said i thought he was eating lunch with you and then that's when nick's like so charlie's mad with you then and tal's like no i'm pissed off with him <laughs> <laughs> and nick's just like okay and starts to eat his sandwich yeah. he's like this is going nowhere i'm just gonna start on lunch <laughs> but i do i do love the fact that he stays because he very easily mm -hmm. could have been like all right I'm going to get out of here. This is yeah. not a pleasant experience. But he does. And it's kind of a power move even to just like sit down and start eating your lunch. Just kind of like, well, I'm not going yeah. anywhere. So, and it works because Tao kind of then kind of starts unloading everything. And he says that he's he was worried about Charlie joining rugby because he knew that Charlie would get picked on by some of the idiots the next year. And then he did. And then Tao says... <laughs> I'm done trying to protect him when he's forgotten I exist. Like, I deserve to be appreciated. And I have angry thoughts. <laughs> I knew it. So <laughs> I, before I go into my angry thoughts, do you want to share any thoughts on this moment? Uh, <laughs> I mean, I again, devil's advocate, like from his perspective, I could see how he feels this way, but there's he's made a lot of wrong decisions. He has jumped to a lot of conclusions. And he also is not doing a good job of communicating. Mm -hmm. Even though he's talking to Charlie and talking at him all season, he's not doing a good job of communicating with Charlie and hearing mm -hmm. him out and like soaking in what he's saying. So my initial reaction to him saying I deserve to be appreciated is like, you are appreciated, but he hasn't asked you to do half this shit. So, of course, he doesn't appreciate it because he's asked you to stop and you just keep doing it. My initial reaction was to angrily pause <laughs> the television and in all caps write, Charlie didn't ask you to protect him. <laughs> yeah. And because my thing is he's so, okay, I'm going to read my full note um, without shouting. Although, please imagine that I'm shouting this because it's in all caps. 
Um, <laughs> I said, Charlie didn't ask you to protect him. You are projecting all of your shit onto him. And to be honest, your attempts at helping made everything worse. If anyone should be mad at anyone else, Charlie should be mad at you, not the other way around. <sighs> <laughs> I just, I, <laughs> deep cleansing breaths everybody deep yeah. cleansing breaths well nick immediately starts to reassure tau which like is the of course because of course, he's nick fucking nelson so you know he's like i think you know he he loves you a lot and that's why he's so nervous you know about telling you which like yes and no <laughs> <laughs> I think he's mostly afraid of his reaction because of how Tao has been acting this entire time. But I also understand Nick not being like, well, if you weren't such an asshole all the time, maybe he would have told you. Yeah, because like. <laughs> Nick is still trying to make a good impression. Mm-hmm. So yeah, Nick tells him that it's because he loves him a lot. And Tao goes on this rant saying that like he'll believe that when he sees it. Which like is frustrating. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I have complicated feelings about it. It's one of those things where I, I have a bit more empathy for Tao when he says that. Um, not because he says that, but just like I, yes, Charlie's been distant, and I can get how he might feel like Charlie doesn't care about him anymore, and that the timing does coincide with like Charlie hanging out with Nick more. Like I get that, mm -hmm. but I also just like. I'm like, I just want a little, little, little teeny tiny bit of self-awareness from Tao to like acknowledge that he's been also like actively pushing Charlie away. Yes. And I, I don't think he really gets that until later in this episode. Mm -hmm. Like he's still not there yet at the end of the scene. Oh, definitely not. Um, I did. I just wanted to jump back a little bit. Because I did have one note about um, – Tao says that maybe he would have done things differently if Charlie had told him that Charlie and Nick were going out. And I'm like, okay, but you were being so shitty specifically about Nick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, like, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty and all of that. So for, for me, like, there's just so much, like, like, but really, but would you have? But would you have? I think more, like – where that line comes from is that, like, Tao was convinced that Nick was straight and that Charlie was going to get hurt. And had he known that they were actually dating and that there was a chance mm -hmm. of this, like, working out, maybe he wouldn't have pushed Charlie so hard to, like, stop hanging out with Nick, which would have then in turn created yeah. less of a of a break between the two of them. Mm. That, that makes but sense. But also, like, you were not a space you were not presenting yourself as a safe space to talk about this. Yeah. So of course he didn't tell you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That line kind of rubbed me wrong when I was watching. Mm -hmm. I was like, ah, but would you have? <laughs> um, but no, I definitely see it more from that angle of like knowing that it wasn't all like a big setup makes more sense. Right. But then jumping back to after Tao says, I'll believe it when I actually see it. <laughs> Tao like has a moment's pause <laughs> and is like, wait, why is Charlie mad at you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How come you're here? <laughs> <laughs> this part breaks my heart. It does. It hurts. He says that he thinks Charlie's struggling with lying about their relationship. Like he knows that they're not ready, that Nick is not ready to come out, but also it's like taking a toll on him, which is true. Mm hmm. But, you know, Tao then, in response, hits the nail on the head. Yeah. <laughs> because he knows Charlie very well. Yes, I will say from this point on in the scene, Tao does redeem himself a little bit in my eyes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yes. He softens a lot. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, he his anger from the end is like finally fizzling out mm -hmm. um, at the beginning of this. And he's hitting more of like the sadness of it. Yeah. And so it, it's easier for him to see that Nick is also struggling with this and understand that, like, if he could just help him understand Charlie a little better, maybe he can help them get through this part, which is, like, just a really good friend moment. 
Yeah. Um, and I actually, I really like the advice that he gives to Nick, where he's like, Charlie thinks him just existing is annoying to people. And then in parentheses, I wrote, <laughs> which, same. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> I relate. <laughs> and then he also says that Charlie isn't going to force Nick to come out, which is a good thing. And I think everyone is all on the same page with that. Um, and then mm-hmm. this, I think, is the most important thing for Nick to hear, mm-hmm. which is that Charlie probably wants to be something more than the secret guy you sometimes kiss on the down low. And then I wrote, does Tao know about Ben? <laughs> Why am I only just thinking about this now? Because I'm like, wait a minute, that's that's exactly what happened. And I, I think from all of the information that we have, Tao doesn't yeah. know. Nope. Nick is the only one that knows about Ben. Yeah. And I think it's important for the line that he says, like, he he doesn't want – or he wants to be more than just secret guy you kiss on the down low. And if you can't give that to him, then that's fine. But it's always going to make him feel a little bit crap about himself. And, like, that's a very good way to put it. Like, I, I get that you're not ready, but it still is going to affect him and make him feel shitty. Like, yeah. I think that kind of puts it into perspective for Nick, too. And Nick just goes like, oh. <laughs> It just, mm-hmm. like, kills me because he's, like, oh, sh-. like, he, like, it, like, hits yeah. him. And he, like, is kind of, like, stunned into silence a little bit by it. Um, and I think, too, that he's a little bit taken aback that Tao is trying to give him Charlie advice. Mm-hmm. And then <laughs> one of my favorite Tao lines. Uh, so Tao tells Nick to chalk. <laughs> this is a tongue twister if ever there is one. Tao tells Nick to talk to Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> And Nick says that Tao should as well. And Tao says, no, I'm going to stay pissed off at him for a little longer. And I love it. Yeah. I love it. It's such. And he like straightens his jacket when he says, yes. like, no, I'm going <laughs> to I'm gonna stay pissed off at him a bit longer. It's perfect. I forget which episode it was. Oh, it was Friend where I was like, I said that I looked up Tao's um, sun sign and he's a Virgo Libra cusp and that just feels very <laughs> accurate mm-hmm. it's a very it's a very good line um yeah super fitting and in response to that Nick suggests that t- uh, Tao to <laughs> rugby because it's good for a re- <laughs> I'm laughing just imagining Tao's face I know <laughs> so- <laughs> William Gao kills this this facial expression it, he j- it's just it's just like are you fucking kidding me in yeah. a single, like, it's great. His it's- face, it stays completely straight, but his eyebrows go up, like, seriously. <laughs> right. It's so good. It's it's great. And that is that is the moment that Tao Su is redeemed. <laughs> like, uh. um, and then there is a brief shot that I just so happened to pause it on that is very – symbolic (laughs) so before the scene cut there's a shot and it's nick on one side of the table tau on the other side of the table and there's just like this dmz of space in between like nick and nick's lunch on one side and then there's like a plank of wood part of the picnic table that has nothing on it and then tau stuff and then tau and I feel mm-hmm. like it's, like, really representative of, like, this, like, is visually representing this, like, fragile truce that has mm-hmm. been established through this conversation. And it's, like, all right, they're not going to be friends and they might not even really see eye to eye because, like, literally in the shot they don't – like, they're not looking at each other. But they're at least trying for Charlie's mm-hmm. sake. And it's just, like, this quick little shot and I just so happened to pause it and I was, like, <gasps> symbolism! <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah. The next scene is another fingertip hurting moment. Oh, I yeah, I can yeah. My in the middle of my notes for this scene in all caps it just says it hurts me. <laughs> literally. <laughs> yeah, I literally feel pain right now. Oh my god. <sighs> Charlie hasn't responded since two nights ago when he asked to get lunch with Nick with the intention of breaking up with him. Mm-hmm. And Charlie, uh, not Char- and Nick texts Charlie, what's going on? Please talk to me with a heart. 
With a heart, yes. And we get to see Nick's frequently used emoji. So just to lighten the mood <laughs> for a Ooh, moment. I didn't even pay attention. Yeah, I didn't get all of them, but I got as many as I could. So we see the red heart, the upside down smiley face, which also feels like bi energy. Yeah. <laughs> a softball. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, the like frowny side eye face. <laughs> And then I had to look up like what the actual official description of this was because I have no fucking idea. <laughs> Apple calls it the weary face, but I, I like, I literally do not know. I wish that I had actually typed the emoji in because I, That's I what I'm gonna do right are we all, now. Are we all googling weary face emoji? I feel like that one and the like side eye frowny face are both like flirty, flirting yeah. with Charlie yes. <laughs> emojis. Um, I um, I asked Eddie. I was like, "What?" Even before I looked it up, I was like, "What even would you call this?" And um, he said that it was. It looked like an orgasm face, <laughs> and, not like a, and not like a weary face. I, and I'm like, I can see that being an interpretation. Um, I use it for whining. So like yeah, anytime I want I to come it. across whiny, that's what I use. That's how I use it too, is like a whiny face. Um, yeah. Weary is an interesting descriptor though. I could not come up with the word whiny when I was making these notes apparently. <laughs> um, and then the like shocked, surprised, embarrassed face with the wide eyes and the red cheeks. Mm -hmm. A baseball. The okay hand sign, like the okay – um, <laughs> the two pink hearts, the thumbs okay, up, yeah, and the peace sign. The peace sign. <laughs> I was very <laughs> happy. Super bisexual emojis. Mm -hmm. So then we see Charlie in his white and orange striped shirt, and I've decided that white and orange stripes are his like sad overalls from Buffy because <laughs> in the like kiss slash secret episode when he is like pouting after the kiss he has on a different orange and white striped shirt and now he's depressed again in a in another orange and white stripe so these are his sad stripes <laughs> i had not caught that but that's great yeah it's i because i thought it was the same shirt at first mm. i was like is this the same shirt and then i uh, stopped the episode went back and looked and they're they're slightly different <laughs> like the white stripes are bigger, I think, in mm. Kiss slash Secret, and the orange stripes are bigger in this one. So he like flopped it, <laughs> but it also matches like his bedding. Yeah, except in that one episode when he has green stripes instead of orange. Well, you can't uh, have the shirt and the, the stripes blend. Right. <laughs> it all has to be contrasting, aesthetically pleasing. <laughs> yes, and it is very aesthetically pleasing. So. Um, Charlie starts typing, I'm sorry, and then it cuts back to Nick watching Charlie type. <laughs> <sighs> Haven't we all? It hurts we me. <laughs> <laughs> also, we didn't start a, the, this window is playing the whole time too, which is like. Our window. Yeah, it a knife, kills. Knife to the heart. And Charlie deletes the message. <laughs> and then I cry. Because Nick sees, like, the, the Charlie is typing goes away, but there's no message, and he keeps trying to scroll up <laughs> to see Which he did in Crush. Oh, I missed that. When he was asking about Ben, and Charlie was trying to figure out how to respond, and it takes him forever, and Nick is, like, trying to refresh it, trying to refresh it. And so that was another, like, parallel throwback but this one is much more heartbreaking. It's much sad. It's much, it's much sad. It's much sad, everybody. It's much sad. <laughs> it's much sadder, I think is what I was trying to say. My brain is not working very well. Um. <laughs> so Charlie puts his phone down and just kind of rolls over and becomes one with his uh, duvet. <laughs> <laughs> Which speaks to me. And Nick is just looking... He's looking so sad and lost and scared. And then we have this edit with the comic book panel, like editing, that has Nick mm -hmm. in his very blue room um, on the top and Charlie in his very yellow room at the bottom. And then I am in my room feeling very sad. 
<laughs> yes. Just sobbing on the couch for me. Yeah. And Nick's like looking around the room, like clearly feeling lost and not sure how to make this better. <sighs> it's just so sad. I'm so sad. It really is. We're almost through the sadness, though. We are almost through it. We're almost sadness. through it. <laughs> then it just like very tonally, like visually, it just goes from this like sad darkness to sports day. <laughs> very bright colors <laughs> and sunshine. <laughs> and it's like, hey, were you sad? Yeah. We're going to fix it. <laughs> yeah. And Elle is looking very scared. I don't blame her. Mm-mm. But she has two really good friends with her. Yes. One of whom very heroically suggests that they leave and <laughs> pretend that they all have sprained ankles. <laughs> I love Tara being like, what, did we have some sort of group ankle-related accident? Like, <laughs> Listen, you say you were practicing for the three-legged race. Yep, there you go. Practicing for the th- three-legged race. I love that Darcy just like thinks on her feet though. She's like, well, I can have like a sprained wrist or like a back injury. Like we'll figure out the details. <laughs> yeah. Just, we'll just get out of here. And L, she just is like, nope, I want to do this. And and you can tell that it's a, a big deal for her. Like she, mm-hmm. she needs to like go and like, it almost feels like she needs to prove like to herself, like she's okay. Like, and to show herself how far she's come. Yes. Yep. And I love the, like, look that Tara and Darcy share behind her Mm -hmm. as she's saying this. Like, they're really proud of her, too. And then they all, like, join hands and they, like, skip in chanting, sports day, sports Sports day, day." sports day. Which is just not realistic. (laughs) No, not at all. No. It's more like, oh, fuck, why do we have to do this? Yeah. Sports day is very colorful, is my next note. Also, I like that they seem to have gotten like zip up hoodies that match their uniforms. Yeah. It's like all the Higgs students have the same like yellowy, orangey, <laughs> whatever color that is. Yeah. It's like a blend of the two. Mm-hmm. Um it's like a mustardy color. Yeah. Um zip up hoodies. I thought that that was nice. I like that. They were nice, yeah. Thank like you, those. school. <laughs> yeah. This is like the most intense like sports sport day field day i've ever seen Mm -hmm. it's very decorated and i want to know who did that who decorated it because it definitely wasn't miss sink right (laughs) maybe it was mr ajay (laughs) (laughs) just forcing all of the art students to go out and decorate (laughs) the like sports fields (laughs) that's one way to get the art kids excited about uh field day right it kind of cuts inside the gym uh, where they're, I Mm -hmm. guess, like doing like registration or whatever. And Charlie gets a red bib and he sees Nick and walks away before Nick can talk to him. He runs. He (laughs) He runs runs away. (laughs) He's he's Uh, gone. He's like, goodbye. (laughs) Not doing this. Yeah. As I've said before, Charlie is definitely flight and fight or flight. And he turns Mm -hmm. around and tucks his tail and runs in the other direction. And poor Nick his face just like falls and like I don't know. It just it hurts a lot to see him. Like all he wants to do is to talk is to talk to Charlie. And Charlie literally runs from him every time he sees him. <laughs> and it's uh, it hurts mm. so bad. And then we go back outside and Elle is sitting on like a picnic table. Sans Tara and Darcy. Mm-hmm. Um uh, but that Tao is like so searching the crowd for her he is like Mm -hmm. bobbing and weaving trying to find l and when he sees her his whole face lights up yeah (laughs) but he's not feeling any type of way they're just no he has no he's totally platonic feelings totally platonic i love how like supportive he is though she's like ugh. He said he says it's li- it's literally like old times and she's like don't say that I thought I'd never have to come back to this hellhole. And he immediately <laughs> deflates his and is like do you want to go hide? We can go hide. <laughs> it's like all of her friends are like just don't do it. Let's just leave. <laughs> yeah. And I mean like listen, for Tao, Tao Tao is all of us in this moment uh because he hasn't signed up for an event. Yeah. And he's worried that Miss Sing is going to find out and make him quote do the high jump or something. 
<laughs> which which I would love to see. Yes. I mean, no, he would be fine with that. He's tall. Yeah, but I feel like he's just so awkward That's and he true. would be so resistant to it. You know, he wouldn't commit. <laughs> he uh, would be fighting uh, yeah. it the whole way. <laughs> that's that's true. I'm trying to think what event Tao could do. <laughs> just silence after you said that. <laughs> Please leave that silence in the edit. <laughs> <laughs> I literally can't think of anything. I don't know. Nothing. I, 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 yeah, I think like one of the throwing, I think something that involves throwing things would be his best bet. Cause even though he has noodle arms, like he's got a lot of rage that he could put into right. it. Yeah. Um, so like javelin, probably javelin, which sounds like what they did last year. Yeah. Probably should have just signed up for the javelin with Isaac. Yeah. I feel like maybe also, like, he'd probably be good at, like, a sack race, like, hopping. Yeah, but it seems like they don't have, like, the fun stuff. It seems like it's all very, I like, know, yeah. track and field kind of stuff, plus rugby. Yeah. It's all very serious, competitive yeah. things. <laughs> it's weird. I love this announcer. He's so feisty. It's Stephen Fry. We did talk about this. It's Stephen Fry. Yeah, yeah, My note right. literally says, Headmaster Stephen Fry returns. <laughs> <laughs> his name is headmaster barnes but it, he's headmaster stephen fry <laughs> yes no but i love him he does a great job with this he welcomes everyone to sports day and says that if anyone hasn't signed up for an event miss singh will hunt you down and murder you which is like a little too far <laughs> yeah it's a little he has bit. to backtrack on that one <laughs> yeah um he yeah he does. He then clarifies that she won't murder them, but she might ban she might ban them from watching the Reds versus Blues rugby match later today. An even worse fate, if you ask me. And everyone starts cheering. And I have a question: <laughs> You guys are all like super hype for this sports day rugby match but none of you could be bothered to go to the actual rugby match in secret because mm -hmm. there's no one there no parents no one <laughs> it's weird just, mm -hmm. yeah and i also like just again this is where i start questioning like this whole event <laughs> i'm like yeah the only thing I can think of, which doesn't track with their behavior thus far, but like maybe by the time if they make it to the rugby match, then they're done with actually having to participate and they can just watch. Yeah. But like they seem pretty stoked to participate. So, <laughs> yeah, it's really weird. I like, OK, so here's the deal. I could get if everyone's excited because they're getting out of class for the day. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I would much rather be like sitting around in the sun. And it also, because like not for nothing, it seems like everyone just does one event. So it's like you do your event yeah. and then you're done. Which is like also not how it was for us. You had to do like everything. It's weird. Um, but then uh, Stephen Fry comes back to say, <laughs> good luck one and all and go do sports. <laughs> Which yeah. speaks to me deeply. It reminds yeah. me of uh, my nerd friends and I in college who uh, whenever someone was talking about sports or if we were like at like a sports event for whatever reason, uh, I had one friend who would go, hooray, sports, do the thing, win the points. <laughs> and nice. it has very <laughs> similar energy to that. Yeah. There is one part that we skipped over, just a little oh. tiny moment when Isaac comes up and hugs Elle and he's – and. I think Elle is the one that says, like, where's Charlie? And Isaac says, I haven't seen him. And Tao says he's probably with the rugby team. They ha have this whole thing. But the whole time, Elle is looking a little bit confused, which makes me wonder how much she actually knows about, like, what yeah. really went down between Harry and Tao and Charlie and Nick. Because she looks a little, a little lost at the dynamic. Yeah. And it's also – this is also where I, I had posted about this when I was rewatching the episode – I paused it and Isaac just has the most excellent frown after <laughs> Elle asks yeah. where Charlie is. I'll have to remember to like repost it. It's just, it's an, it's an excellent frown. It's like, mm -hmm. 
I, I can't to you. I I can't frown. Like my face does not. <laughs> it just I scowl more than I frown. Like I can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My the corners of my my mouth don't go that way. <laughs> I have to concentrate. <laughs> also, now that we've seen all of the characters, I want to talk a little bit about how perfect everyone's face paint is for yes. each individual character. Um, because like. Tara and Darcy have this like yin and yang flow type thing mm-hmm. going and they have opposites. So like Tara's is going one way and Darcy's is going the other. And, and they're then, on other they're on opposite teams as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um Elle has stars on one side and a heart on the other, which like just really makes me think of like the arcade scene. And then Isaac has little flowers, which remind me of his various Daisy Prince we've seen him <laughs> in. And then Tao just has like a T for <laughs> Truum and or also maybe Tao. I I feel like he was uh, like avoiding the group. And so he probably had to do it himself. And so he was like, I'll just do a T. Yeah. And then um, Nick has nothing, which tracks because <laughs> yes. if he's not hanging out with Charlie and his friends, no, like, you know, Harry's not going to do his face paint. Like, yeah. <laughs> who's going to do help him do his face paint? I wonder what his face paint would have been. If he was hanging out hmm. with Charlie and friends. And Charlie just has like the the like sunshine rays. Yes. So I wonder if he wouldn't have like something to match or flow well with Charlie's. Oh yeah. I was thinking like the same thing. Like he would have like the same sunshiny eye mm-hmm. rays. Like some stars. Because he's the rugby star. Yeah. What would your face paint be? Oh, um, I don't know. Maybe I'm I would I'm trying to think of like past festival looks that I've done because mm. I have used a lot of like glitter and stuff. And one of my favorites is to do like over my left eye and then like kind of have it go under my kind of similar to Darcy and Tara's like uh flow of theirs, but mm-hmm. I wouldn't do dots. I would probably do like lines Just, like Charlie like if you melted Charlie's look with Tara and Darcy's look, that's probably something like I would end up with. Mm. I was I was thinking something similar, like where I'd kind of like follow the same like pattern as Tara and Darcy, mm-hmm, but with stars mm-hmm. instead of dots. Um, nice, like little like asterisk stars. Um, yeah, cute. Yeah, <laughs> we should have done our face paint for today. We fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> and then we go to the art room, and I I also love this scene. Yeah, this is. Mm. So he, Mr. Ajay sees Charlie and tells him there aren't any sports day events in the art block. And the tone in his voice is go the fuck away. I was told I did not have to deal with children today. Yeah, for sure. I might be, proje- He's like, I might be projecting a little bit. He's like, I didn't have to teach today. I didn't have to do anything. Go away. Yeah, he's, like, clearly cleaning and organizing, too. Yeah. So, like, this he's, is interrupting his flow. <laughs> yeah, like, he does – he's on, like, a break. He doesn't have to supervise children at this moment. He doesn't want to – listen, Mr. Ajay, we've all been there. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and that he also says that Charlie bet- better not ask to stay in the art room all afternoon. But then he looks up because he's, like, very busy. He looks up mm-hmm. and, like, s- really takes Charlie in and – is like more concerned and kind of is like, you've been coming here for lunch a lot and asks if it's a repeat of last year when he was being bullied. And Mm -hmm. Charlie like says no. And we get an excellent teacher speech from Mr. Ajay. He says, all right, I'm not going to make you go because I'm a nice teacher. (laughs) Yeah. He's very like, I'm a nice teacher, which like, Spoke to me deeply. Um, And when I was in school, I thought that hiding from it all was safer, easier. But sometimes the loneliness was just as bad. Don't let anyone make you disappear, Charlie. And I break down into tears. (laughs) Don't we all? I. This is exactly what I needed someone to say to me when I was 14, 15 years old. Yes. Yes, this is why yes. this is why adults love this show just as much as teenagers do because it's like so healing for the inner child. Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm, to just like mm -hmm. finally have someone tell you the thing that you needed to be told 10 years ago. (laughs) I know. And like, I relate a lot to Charlie's specific type of anxiety Mm -hmm. too. And so like the first time I heard this line, it broke me a little bit, but like in a good way, like, and I have legitimately thought about this line nonstop since my first viewing and like, Spoiler alert, it's going to be my favorite quote for this episode because it is my favorite quote of the entire series. It's a great one. I and it's, love this quote. It's so good. And it's such important advice. It is. It's – I actually kind of want to, like, get a poster of it. Just, like, the don't let anyone make you disappear and just put it in my classroom. <laughs> Um, and then before we go back outside, um, I think I've st- I think I've called this the sadness corner on the podcast before. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Um, but he looks over at the sadness corner and then he looks back to the door, and like yeah. kind of like implies that he is going back outside that he's not gonna hide in the art room. Yep, he has to choose between braving it out or disappearing, and he's gonna choose to brave it out. Yeah. Because once again, I scream, Charlie Spring is so brave. Yes, he is. And also, like, we know the relationship between Mr. Ajay and Charlie at this point. Like, mm-hmm. he doesn't want to He doesn't want to disappoint Mr. A. And also, anything that he is saying to him is going to be very meaningful because he's very much, like, a beacon of learning for Charlie. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes, I am a beacon of learning, so fire away. <laughs> you know, his opinion really matters. Yeah, I I have had a few students who I've had the kind of relationship like this with. I actually have one right now. And I it's a different context, um, but I thought about her a lot when I rewatched this scene and I was like, yeah, okay. <laughs> no. Yeah. I'm glad she has you. Yeah, she's going through it right now. Um <laughs> anyway, we go back outside. <laughs> And Miss Thing is pissed. <laughs> She's so mad. Oh, so. <laughs> She's so She screams it across the field. Elle's face, too, is like, oh, shit. <laughs> you <laughs> fucked up. So she tells him that he has to do, was it the 200 meter? Yeah. The 200 meters. And he like, he's he's like, whoa, no, 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 I can't. (laughs) I can't do that. And um, he says he can't run. And she says, can't you? (laughs) Because like, you got two legs and you seem to be able to use them, my guy. What do you mean you can't run? (laughs) Yeah. He's like, well, not fast. (laughs) And that's when L comes to his defense and was like, he really can't. (laughs) Yeah. But also I love her being like, no protests. <laughs> oh my god. Um, and then as soon as she's gone, Charlie comes up and is like, "Swap bibs with me." And I have a question <laughs> <laughs> because we know he quit the rugby team, so he's not doing the rugby match. What was he supposed to do? And is it not going to be conspicuous when he does the two hundred meter run? And doesn't show up for his other previously assigned event, which Tao has. It's not like they swapped events. It's just Charlie's running this for him. And I'm Uh really confused. Also, like, Miss Singh just told him that he had to be over there. And then, I I mean, she goes over there. So is she not like, where the fuck is Tao? I just told him he had to do this. Yeah, and why the fuck is Charlie over here now? Because presumably she also has, like, the breakdown of who's on which yeah. team and knows that Charlie yeah. is on Team Red. On that little clipboard. Yeah. I don't know. But I also have to bring up the blooper that they shared of them trying to switch bibs and Joe gets, like, totally and completely caught in his bib with, like, one arm up and, like, can't get out. <laughs> It's entirely the kind of scene that is just lends itself very well to a blooper. Mm-hmm. Like something like that is going to someone's going to fuck something up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so after he says swap bibs, Charlie apologizes and he says, "I'm sorry. I'm just sorry for everything." And that's mm. when Tao, like you can see it in his face that he's like, "Okay, I have to. I'm done with this. Like we need to get." 
back on track with our friendship because he's hurting a lot and I'm hurting a lot and it would help us both out if we just would be nice to each other (laughs) and be friends again, because this is just making it worse for both of us. And you can like see his face fall and you can see L also like processing this entire interaction and knowing that like, you can see the hopefulness like in her face, like, okay, I think we're finally at the end of this tiff that they're having. Yeah, I, I like totally missed that part <laughs> in my notes. <laughs> I just skipped it. <laughs> like, you were too I, busy thinking about how they were getting away with this switch. <laughs> yeah, no, like it's probably what it was. I was just caught up in like, just, like <laughs> yeah. of course my brain is just like, okay, but how is this event, this fictional event that didn't actually happen? How is it actually <laughs> organized and run? Because in case anyone is wondering, my Mercury is in Virgo. <laughs> um so then charlie goes to the starting line and ben is there because of course ben is there and ben asks if charlie is obsessed with him or something fuck you ben hope yeah fuck you <laughs> yeah and i would like to ask ben are you obsessed with charlie or something mm. because that seems to be more the case and it's also because like so many times Ben has done this thing where he's just like flipped everything he's feeling and put it back on Charlie. So I'm like, yeah, I mean, it's pretty obvious that he is obsessed with it. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, Um, everything in Baldy just proves it. It's just like the fucking tone of voice he uses Mm -hmm. is like, it just makes me want to punch him in his little face. So slimy. (laughs) Yeah. Slimy. Yes. (sighs) Charlie just ignores him as he should. I love this race. My note says, <laughs> Charlie ignores him. Let's settle this on the track, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> and they do. They yes. do. I I love it because they run the race and Charlie wins, but Ben is a close second. However... <laughs> After the race, Ben is, like, laid out on the ground, panting, Mm -hmm. and Charlie has barely broken a sweat. Yep. (laughs) And it's excellent. And before we get to the conversation that Charlie and Ben have, which is so, so important, I do have Isaac book watch. Um, nice. Because Isaac has a new book while they're watching the race. Uh, El Tao and Isaac are all together watching and cheering Charlie on. And Isaac has the book, There Is No Planet B, a handbook for the make or break years by Mike Berners Lee, which is a nonfiction book all about things that people can do to be more sustainable and try and not Take exacerbate climate change. Yes. Take better mm-hmm. care of the planet. Um, I really hope that it acknowledges that a lot of the issues are caused by corporations and not by individuals. But mm-hmm. I, we stand a sustainable queen. Yes, Isaac Henderson. Also, I love El El's like squeal that she does <laughs> when he starts running. She's like, "Oh, I forgot how fast he is!" <laughs> like, and Tao he says, "Come on!" And he like does like a uh, like elbow hook. He's so excited <laughs> too. Like, yeah. I think he's just glad he doesn't have to do it. Like, <laughs> yeah, for sure. And I think he's also excited because he knows Charlie's going to win. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, if you watch their faces when they're running, like Ben is low key freaking out. He's like, he doesn't, it's like, it's going to be a stab to his ego if he does not win this race. And then Charlie is just like, he looks angry for a second. And then the second that he cuts a little bit ahead of Ben, he gets this like, smirk like (laughs) yeah (laughs) i did it and i'm gonna beat you and i every time i'm like that's right charlie (laughs) it's great it's great and there's just for the viewer there's also just like the satisfaction of like the fact that like ben had to fucking work his ass off and he Mm -hmm. still couldn't win at charlie you you never would have guessed that he he wasn't even prepared yeah he didn't didn't know he was gonna have to do this today he didn't warm no up. Stretches he didn't or stretch. anything. Yep. And then we finally get Charlie telling Ben off. And I'm so fucking proud of him for it. Mm-hmm. He says, you don't get to have an opinion about anything I do. And then Ben, being the asshole that he is, 
is like, do you want me to go around telling everybody about you and Nick? And Charlie's like, do you want me to go around telling everybody about you and me? And I'm like, hell yeah, Charlie. (laughs) I'm so (laughs) proud of him. And then Ben like has this face where he goes from like angry to terrified. Like he's Mm -hmm. like mad about it. But then he's like, wait, but I actually genuinely don't want anyone to know. (laughs) Yep. And Charlie's like, except I wouldn't do that because I'm a decent person. He says, I understand that you're figuring out your sexuality, but you don't get to make me feel like crap anymore just because you hate yourself, which is yeah. true. Mm-hmm. And Ben is crying at this point. He lets out just like a li- <laughs> one little tear, which like I, I've watched this scene a bunch and I've thought about it a lot. And I'm like, I can't decide if he's crying because Charlie – is spitting truth at him or if he this is like a residual tear from the moment of fear that he felt probably a combination of the two yeah and also maybe just a little bit that he's a sore loser and a whiny little bitch and didn't like true. he true, lost true. <laughs> in front of all of his friends <laughs> to some stupid year 10 like and you know harry's gonna give him shit for losing oh yeah especially to the gay boy so mm-hmm. Mm -mm. But Charlie is not scared anymore, and Ben is never going to make Charlie disappear again. Never. And then Tao and Charlie apologize to each other, and they have this, like, big hug. And they're both, like, just saying, sorry, no, I'm sorry, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, no, I'm sorry. (laughs) It's cute. And Charlie says he should have been a better friend. Uh, Tao says he shouldn't have gotten angry with Charlie. Tao says, I made it so hard for you to tell me. Charlie says, I should have been looking out for you as much as you were looking out for me. And I kind of roll my eyes a little bit, but I let it go. Mm. (laughs) I was like, all right. And then Charlie suggests a movie night, which is the perfect thing because Tao has a really long list of movies he needs to force Charlie to watch. He's so excited. (laughs) (laughs) He's instantly like bouncing on his heels like, ah, yes, movie night. Which Charlie knew. Charlie knew that saying movie night was just going to solve all of his problems. Yep. Um, so then Tao invites Charlie to join him and Elle, who are going to go look around all of Elle's old classrooms. And Charlie doesn't go. And I think he didn't go on purpose, that meddling little gay. Mm-hmm. He was like, no, you go ahead. I'll be okay. Yeah. <laughs> Enjoy your classroom alone time with Elle. Yes. And then we get a sports day montage. Too close to you. Yep. Yes. And I want to point out, that we see that Tao seems to have no trouble running at all through the hallways. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> he doesn't two look shots. great. He doesn't look great. <laughs> but he's going pretty fast. Like, he's keeping up with L, and he's not doing the weird, like, sideways out foot outrun that we see yeah. in girls. Mm. And so, and then and he does skip at the end, but, like, there's two shots of him running normally, and I'm like, mm. <laughs> There. And then we see Tara does the high jump, um, which I'm confused because I thought that the way that the high jump worked is that they like put it at a certain height. And then if you clear it, you go higher. But Tara, Tara seems like she does the one jump and she's done. Like she mm-hmm. kind of like has like an I did it and she's done. And I'm like, again, confused about <laughs> the organization of this event. Um, <laughs> My note just but- says Tara does a sport. <laughs> <laughs> And Isaac did, in fact, sign up for the javelin again. Um, And Mm -hmm. Isaac Bookwatch, Charlie, is in the crowd holding onto Isaac's book for him. Yeah. Keeping his page marked. Yeah. Um, Which I loved. I also really like this stained glass around the doors in the corridor that we get to see. Um, We see it again later at the end, but we see it when they're running through the hallways. Um, It's really pretty. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Very pretty. And Darcy's like the most supportive girlfriend ever. Although not for nothing, everyone is, is like so the excited. most support. This is the most supportive like field day, sports day I've ever seen. Yeah. Like every sports day that I've been to, like inevitably you've got like at least five kids like watching and like snickering at everyone who doesn't do well. And mm-hmm. like not for nothing, Isaac, he throws it. We could see the other two javelins. Like, he's, like, way far back compared to the other people. And everyone still cheers for him. And I'm like, mm-hmm. no one's laughing? I want – I'm jealous. I'm, like, jealous. Yeah. I'm like, why are these kids so nice? Where's all no. the bullies? <laughs> <laughs> 
they're all practicing rugby right now. That's what that's <laughs> yeah, entirely. And Isaac is very proud. He like throws it. He's like really proud of himself. Yeah, he does a little jump. Yeah, Charlie is also really proud of him, but his like smile fades like immediately. He's like he mm-hmm. like and like I just like kind of like I'm assuming I'm like he's thinking about Nick. He's missing Nick. He wants to go be with Nick because yeah. that's the one thing that's missing. Everything else has been resolved, but there's still something that feels amiss. Yeah, I mean, and, and at this point, he's still is like thinking that it's over like he he needs to let him go Mm -hmm. and so just like on top of missing him being like but i can't i can't go be with him and we see um tara and darcy kiss in the crowd Mm -hmm. and there's i shared this on our instagram story but like to the left of the screen there's a person behind Uh them who is like just like beaming at them and clapping, like watching them kiss. I'm like, that's all of us. We're like, yeah, yeah public kisses. <laughs> and mm-hmm. uh, Darcy is, her mind is blown. Like she loses her breath. She like <laughs> can't believe that Tara just kissed her. But like also if you pay attention right before the kiss, Tara gets this like mischievous little grin on her face. Like I'm going to kiss her. <laughs> and then she does. And then Darcy's like, holy shit, she just kissed me. <laughs> I love it. Very cute scene. They're so cute. Speaking of cute scenes. Yes. <laughs> Elle's painting is so good. Yes. I have one thing that I wish that we had seen. I would have loved to see Elle and Mr. Ajay have at least one conversation. Yeah. That seems like one of the biggest like injustices of the show. Like, I have to imagine. Like, she was all – she, you know, loves art. She was always in the in the art room. She said she spent like four months like coming every lunch, every lunch period to, yeah, to work on that painting. And like looking at how Mr. Ajay is with Charlie, I have to imagine he's that way with Elle too. So I, I just have to imagine he would be really happy to know like how she's doing at Higgs and happy to see her. And I, I wish I wish that we had seen some of that. Um, that line, her saying that she spent every lunch period in there for four months makes me wonder if that's not how her and Charlie met. It's possible. That that would make a lot of sense. I also love that it's just like the art room is just like this like space for the queer kids to hang out. Like a and queer haven, safe. yeah. <laughs> yeah. You need it. You Which need tracks? It. Mm-hmm. It's like if it's not – if they don't have fucking theaters there, if they don't have an auditorium, then it's got to be the art room. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, the, the painting is – gorgeous and it's still mm-hmm. hanging this this child no longer attends this school and her work is still up on the wall mm-hmm. but I love like how embarrassed Tao is of his because <laughs> mm-hmm. it is it's not bad but she's right it has it's like focused on the people which is just it really highlights like how important his friends are to him and his life mm-hmm. I did the most me thing that I could think of doing, and I looked up the definition of landscape paintings. <laughs> <laughs> because Elle says she doesn't think it counts as a landscape if it has people in it. That is her statement. And I was like, eh, but – because like I could think of like – landscapes yeah, that yeah. Have had people in them. So I looked it up, and the only source that I could find that like specified really like what landscape paintings like would contain like specifically was the Encyclopedia Britannica. (laughs) Um, And according to Encyclopedia Britannica, landscape painting is the depiction of natural scenery in art. Landscape paintings may capture mountains, valleys, bodies of water, fields, forests, and coasts, and may or may not include man-made structures as well as people. I will agree with you that the people seem to be the focal point of mm-hmm. Tao's painting, which I would say wouldn't count as a landscape. But to L's specific point, having people does not disqualify it as a landscape. Right. Definitely the focus, though. And like if he had just put some like more tree, like there's one tree. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> one tree and all of his friends and so like if he had just like fleshed out the the actual nature of the scene then mm-hmm. maybe it would have been a little less jolting for l but yeah 
My note on the painting, though, is that it's not great, but it's also much better than anything I could do. <laughs> Same. Same. Hey, they actually look like people, so you get an A from me. <laughs> mm-hmm. I can tell which one is Charlie, which one is Tao, right, which yeah. one is Elle, which one is Isaac. <laughs> We're good. It's – Yeah. You're getting partial credit. <laughs> But after she says that uh, she doesn't think it counts, he just kind of like rolls his eyes and <laughs> lays back on the desk and she comes to lay down with him. And I love the placement of the like cartoon oh, birds birdies. on the on the desk around them, like set designers. Excellent. Good job. And Elle asks if it's awful being at True One without her. Tao says yes. Everything is awful without you. And like he says it in like a joking tone. But the way he's looking at her, mm-hmm. he means it. And my next note is just in all caps, they look so in love. Mm-hmm. They do. They just, I, the scene is such a tease. <laughs> the scene yeah. is such a tease. And the score is so good. It's like sweet and innocent, but also tense. Like there's mm-hmm. tension there. They sit up and Al takes Tao's hand and she says, I was going to tell you something. <laughs> and they are staring d- into each other's souls. They're like, yeah. And I swear to God, every time I watch this scene, I think they're about to kiss. I've seen it a hundred yeah. times. And I still am like, <gasps> that's they because gonna? they are. They're about to kiss <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> before she snaps out of it because she's like, shit, I can't do this. How totally goes for it, too. Yeah. Like, And then she snaps out of it and says, you've got the wrong team's face paint on. Mm -hmm. And then I scream. (laughs) I just want to point out that we can also see in this scene Tao taking a page out of Ben Hope's book and laying the lip gloss on extra thick with three C's. (laughs) Like, so shiny. (laughs) He was prepared for that kiss that didn't happen. Oh, yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. And I mean, like, they're definitely still flirting, though, because she's like, you've got mm-hmm. the wrong team's face paint on. And then she, like, tries to wipe it off with her hoodie sleeve, which <laughs> looks really <laughs> uncomfortable. It looks painful. And also, I'm like, you're in a literal art room. Like, there's a sink over there. <laughs> <laughs> Just behind you, there's a sink. <laughs> Just get some water and a paper towel, please. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also, I feel bad for Elle's parents. You have to wash that hoodie. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But all through that entire exchange, the tension is just getting more and more because once she stops, they're back to staring at each other again. And they almost kiss again, but Elle panics again. Yep. And I'm just like, Elle, do you not see that this boy loves you just as much as you love him? And he is here for it. Mm-hmm. And I get- Read the room. I know. I get from, like, a a storytelling perspective, like, stepping outside of the, like, actual story for a minute to, like, production and the storytellers. I get that they – that is a moment of, like, them in the museum that I – you want to preserve. I get it. Mm -hmm. But come on. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It's such a tease. (laughs) Yeah. And she bolts this time, too. When she snaps out of it, she's like, okay, I got to remove myself from this situation because this is just going to keep happening. And the animation of, like – And, and like, Tao's face being, like, he's frozen for a second. Like, he really thought it was going to happen that second time. And then he's, like – And at first, he looks, like, a little nervous and, like, kind of scared. But then he, like, gets this smile, like, oh, like (laughs) – Oh. (laughs) Maybe it would have happened. (laughs) Yeah. It's very cute. I know. My note is that Tao now finally realizes what is going on. <laughs> yeah. He's finally put it, it together. It only took him the entire season to get here. <laughs> only just. Then it's time for the rugby match. And Headmaster Stephen Fry is back. And he says, it's time for you to sit back and watch as some teenagers crash into each other and <laughs> all over repeatedly. Which, again, prompts everyone to cheer as Coach Sig and the team, like, jog out onto the the field. And it's also, like, a very accurate description of rugby. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then they make the same rugby joke for, like, the third time, which, you know, there's the rule of threes in comedy. So (laughs) Stephen Fry comes back and says, now, can someone explain the rules of rugby to me again? Please. It seems to make no sense. 
which, Georgie, you will be proud. I actually what? remembered some things this time. So, uh, <laughs> progress. <laughs> I could possibly have explained the rules to Headmaster Stephen Fry. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> but as they run out, Nick is searching so hard for Charlie. He's looking everywhere. He even turns around and runs backwards so that he can continue looking. And this is a very cute, uh, like, set decoration moment because there's, like, this uh, heart-shaped decor. It's very much like you could tell there's two or three hearts, like, all together. And Mm. um, it's a cutout. And we see Nick looking for Charlie, and he runs through. So we can see him, like, through the hearts, like, looking for Charlie. It's very cute. And... Miss Singh asks, like, you okay, Nick? And he says, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. He is not fine. Boy is no. not okay. He's just, like, running on autopilot at this point. Mm-hmm. And Charlie and Isaac are not even over there. They're sitting over on a different field entirely. And mm-hmm. Isaac is reading, which mood. <laughs> of course, yeah. But Charlie kind of sees this, and the two of them make their way over to watch the game. And... My favorite Isaac moment of the entire fucking show. They're (laughs) pushing their way through this crowd and Isaac is still reading. Boy's eyes are on the book. Like he. Don't touch me. Don't look at me. Don't talk to me. I'm reading. (laughs) He's like, I will be here for you, Charlie, but also I'm reading. (laughs) Yeah. And Charlie just ditches him. (laughs) Yeah. Like the second they get into that crowd, he's like, I can't see. I got to go over here. Like, just goes over yeah. so he can stand up and get a better view. Which, look. Which, like, Isaac probably doesn't even notice. <laughs> yeah. And then there's a, a girl uh, with a blue bib on that says, Team Blue are doing really well. And then there's a boy in red who says, yeah, but Team Red has Nick Nelson. So they're basically guaranteed to win. <laughs> like, they're just too – they're too involved in this. The kid, this is not realistic. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Charlie stands up on a table to get a better look, and Nick scores, and this is where I remembered something. And I was very proud that I remembered something. So he scored a try, which means now he gets <laughs> to attempt to score a conversion. So that's what's happening. Because I remember that because that's the thing that's like a touchdown and a field goal. Which yeah, is also the you'd... only thing I understand about American football. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I love that play. you like you you were you knew what was going on in the game. So he goes like they are setting up for this like conversion. However, it's like he can feel him, mm-hmm. and he sees Charlie, and the heartbeat sound effect on the show yeah. echoes the beat of my own heart, and Nick just looks. Looks back at Missing, tosses the ball, and walks away. And then he starts jogging away. And mm-hmm. everyone is confused. <laughs> yeah, I love when he's like staring at Charlie because there's a couple of back and forths between the two of them in the shot. Yeah. And like all the kids are so confused. There's like one guy that's like throwing his hands up, like, what yeah. the hell, you know? And people are looking around. Also, Darcy is standing there by herself. I'm like, where's Tara? <laughs> She's just standing there by herself watching the rugby match. And Nick walks over to Charlie and code blue. Mm-hmm. My heart, like literally, my heart completely stops. And Charlie steps down from the table and Nick takes Charlie's hand <laughs> <laughs> and leads him away. And Imogen. Imogen looks at them. And everything clicks. Everything clicks and she just gets this smile and... I get super excited to see what they do with her in season two because mm-hmm, – mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then <laughs> there's just like a student standing next to Mr. Ajay and the student's like, sir, aren't you going to tell Nick Nelson that he has to do the match? And Mr. Ajay, absolute icon. Nah. Nah. I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> also, this is the kid that is going to play James in season <gasps> two. Yay. So he will be back. I love that for him. Um, And then we get this shot of the friend group and everyone is so pleased. Like Darcy and Tara start holding hands and smiling at each other. And Tao like leans over and puts his head on top of Elle. Except 
Isaac, Isaac is no fucks. He is still reading. He could give two shits about this exchange. <laughs> Isaac probably doesn't even know what's happening right now. Yeah. Like, Isaac is yeah. just, like, focused. He's like, they're still playing rugby, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. And I do, though, like, while all of this is happening, I love, like, the extras are just, like, really playing up their, like, confused and frustrated yeah. faces. And, yeah. like, Throwing their hands up, like, and, like, shrugging, like, what's going on? Like, it's great. Yeah. <laughs> awesome background acting, everybody. Awesome Very job. good. Very, very good. So Nick says, I don't want to break up. I know people have hurt you and you feel like I'd be better off without you, but I need you to know that my life is way better because I met you. You don't have to say that. I do, and I'll keep on saying it until you believe me. Look, I don't care about getting into fights or pissing off my mates or anything like that. It's all worth it to be with you. You are the kindest, most thoughtful, and caring, and an amazing person in the whole world. Nick. And if you really want to break up, then I would respect your decision, but I want us to be together. Nick. You're my favorite person. Nick. I need you to believe me. Nick. I believe you. I believe you. Smooch, 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 smooch. <laughs> cry, cry, cry. Um, and I have a note that says when Nick says that my life is way better because I met you, mm. I fall into a million pieces just because. I know. This is full cardiac arrest for me. Like it's been building, but this is the moment when I flatline. Um, yeah. Obviously. But it's also, this is the other end of the parallel we talked about. Um between secret when charlie is spiraling and nick is saying charlie charlie Uh charlie (laughs) and both ends in a face grab kiss and this all the slow motion in the middle of the kiss chef's kiss. it's great it's great and then when charlie pulls away he says nick we're in the corridor and (laughs) nick i'm so proud of him he just looks around he goes oh so what (laughs) Yeah. My the note that I had about the kiss is that <laughs> I don't know what what I was thinking when I wrote this. It just says this is a passionate as fuck kiss, yo. <laughs> this is, they really it go is. for it. And this is also when uh Joe grabs Kit's face for this kiss. This is the only time I noticed his thumbs. <laughs> Which is just like <laughs> funny to me. <laughs> Thanks to Kit, all I can think about during that scene also is just Joe's weird thumbs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, this is just like such a huge step for Nick I, to be like, and so what? Like, who cares yeah. if like I literally just ran through a crowd and grabbed your hand and walked through. Like, we might as well have just done this outside standing up on the picnic table. (laughs) Yeah. And then Nick asks if Charlie is free on Sunday. And he says, yeah, why? And the, like, little mischievous smile that Nick gets, like, it just, like, gets me so excited. I love it. It's coming. Mm -hmm. And then we go to the train station. Charlie asks if Nick is going to tell him where they're going yet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and the way Nick says no, it's just it's so adorable and stubborn. Like, yeah. no. Um, I love this Adidas sweatshirt that he has, mm-hmm. too, the, like, lavender color. It looks so cozy. Yes, and it looks great on him. Yeah, and the colors of Charlie's plaid shirt are also very nice. Very Eastery. Yeah. And then we see them on the train. And we get to see Alice make her little cameo in the yes. corner. And and I love their overalls. Yes, I actually want it. I made a whole note about the overalls. <laughs> because they're Lucy and Yak. And I love Lucy and Yak. I own nice. like I own two pairs of Lucy and Yak overalls. I own a Lucy and Yak jacket, which is like literally the only jacket that I wear. I own uh, my favorite pants are Lucy and Yak. I love Lucy and Yak. They are a smaller, like sustainable British fashion brand uh Uh they're most known for their overalls and like boiler suits but i love them their shit is so comfy um it's a little it's a little bit on the pricier side but like so worth it like yeah hard recommend for lucy and yak (laughs) so yeah i made a whole out like my note says cameo alice oseman is on the train working on a tablet and wearing Lucy and Yak overalls, which are my absolute favorite. And I got very excited when I saw they were wearing them. Nice. And she also has a really cute tote bag. 
<laughs> the tote bag is so cute with the rainbow. Um, and I love that she they put like her artwork up behind them as well. Um, mm-hmm. And that's the we get to see the birds from the end of friend. Yeah. That like animate out of the trees. It's the same okay. birds. Aww. So that's like a super cute callback. Mm hmm. I also love that Alice was like drawing Nick and Charlie on I know. the tablet while doing that cameo. Um, we'll have to like link the Insta post of the like completed yeah. drawing because it's so cute. It is very cute. Um, and so then they're walking down the street and Nick is covering Charlie's eyes. How long have they been walking? Like, how far I is know. the train stop? That's what I want to know. Yes, my, my- <laughs> I literally, I was like, this is adorable, but also as a person with anxiety, this is terrifying. It's like. Mm-hmm. Do we think, do, do they ever say in the comics, like, is has Charlie never been to the beach? Maybe. I, I feel like he's maybe been, but it's probably something that's like few and far between. Just based on his reaction. Or maybe he's like me and he just fucking loves the beach and would react that Same. way. If If someone surprised me with a beach trip. That I was like, oh my god, the beach! And then I would like literally run and I would just like hug the ocean. <laughs> yeah, same. I would just figure it out because mm-hmm. <clears throat> I'm very far from – I'm landlocked. So I would be yeah. like, oh, we're going towards the coast. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> The beach mm-hmm. would have definitely been one of my guesses. But yes, Charlie is very excited to be at the beach. Although I find it hard to believe that it took him that long to hear the seagulls. <laughs> And, like, put two and two together. Seagulls yeah. are very loud, very vocal creatures. Yeah. And also just, like, when you're that close to the ocean, there's, like, a you certain – Yeah, you can hear it. You can feel it in the wind. Mm-hmm. Like, Yeah. So – You can smell it. It's interesting. Especially with his eyes covered, like, your other senses kind of pick up. Mm-hmm. So it is interesting that it took him so long. But it makes for a very cute scene. <laughs> yes. And then we get – an adorable date montage. Yeah. Oh, my God. They're on the carousel. They're doing the, like, face cut out. On the carousel, Nick looks so happy. Like, the smile that he gives during that cut is, like, happiness personified. Pure joy. Yeah. It's – it's uh, I love it. <laughs> it's just a cute, cute little montage. Yeah. And it's – of course, it's perfect that – Nick gets in the in the dog as the dog's face, and Charlie is the cat. Of course, <laughs> this is perfect. Yeah, and then we see them walking down the street, and this kiss when Nick grabs Charlie's face and kisses him in the street, and it's like a very passionate kiss too. Mm-hmm. Is like it just makes me so happy like yeah we're, look at where we are versus where we started and like i also feel like people don't talk about this kiss enough either like everybody focuses on their first kiss but i think this might be my favorite of it's their it's a kisses. really good one this one or the one from friend yeah because that one is very good and very emotional but this one is different because it's so they're, they're so free in this yeah. moment to like it's just be together Mm-hmm. And he kisses him that passionately in the street without thinking twice about it. And, like, it just uh, makes me feel, feel so happy. <laughs> <laughs> and then they're, like, sitting and they're, like, sharing fries. And Nick is, yep. like, trying to throw them in the air and catch them. Mm-hmm. And I, number one, I want all of the outtakes. Uh-huh. Uh, number two, I, I love that it just, he throws it and he tries to catch it and it like, it hits the corner of his mouth and just falls the wrong way onto the floor. I'm like, oh. Yeah, rip. but the whole time it's falling, he's trying to catch it with his hands yeah. too, which is like <laughs> cute. Um, as if there's not a whole basket of fries. Um, but also we see Charlie like shoving fries into his mouth, which is like very refreshing mm-hmm. to see him eating at all in public <laughs> yeah, yeah eating mm-hmm. but to be eating in public and to be eating that like enthusiastically and quickly yeah enthusiastically that's yes and then we get the photo booth charlie's sitting on nick's lap and it's the cutest thing and nick is like pretending to drop charlie and they get the photos and i have a question yes have you ever been to a photo booth that like puts the photos on like a two by two grid instead of like a one by four strip? Mm-hmm. I've never seen that before. Yeah, it's there. The 
it's it is a little jarring because especially in a public space like this, it it would be like the strips. Mm-hmm. But I have been to like weddings and stuff, the higher oh, okay. end photo booths where you get like a page of photos like that. Um, but yes, I wonder if it's not just like a cultural difference in like Maybe. what's the standard. But I thought about that too. I was like, this is a very nice like. <laughs> yeah. Because I think in the comic it's a strip. Yeah, I think so. Um, but more importantly, <laughs> more importantly, when they get the photos, Nick tells Charlie, you're such a dweeb. <laughs> yeah. It's so cute. And it's not in the in the captions, but I, di- I was me. And so I like <laughs> re-listened to it very loudly a couple of times to listen. <laughs> and you hear Charlie say like, adorable. After, <laughs> like, so Nick is like, you're such a dweeb. And Charlie's like, we're so cute. <laughs> Which I is like it. very cute exchange. Um, but also, this is not how it happens in the comics either. Like, mm-hmm. we get the photo booth scene in like a flashback, right? When he's like trying to tell them about like, oh, but remember that time that we you wanted me to do a photo booth? And I was like, we can't both fit. And you like dragged mm-hmm. me onto your lap and like made <laughs> me do it anyway. And so like, it's funny to see it like. In this context. Yes. It's just so happy. It's just so happy. (laughs) And then we go to the beach. And like, I will say, like, I have to imagine that laying down on a pebble beach like that isn't the most comfortable thing. No. Um, And like, they only brought towels. Couldn't you have brought like yoga mats or something like that? Something something a little bit thicker. Yeah. But uh, they're also in their little teenage bodies. So like, it probably is not phasing them at all. Yeah. Or at least like double up towels yeah and, like have one as like a head pillow so many things that i'm just like you couldn't yeah. have just done this slightly more comfortably um, i i mean you know i have notes about how unprepared they are for this <laughs> <laughs> i, I, I mean, all season <laughs> i know um but before we get to ashley's notes and also yes. i have some notes about something as well um nick looks over to charlie and says he was thinking about coming out. And I start crying. Mm-hmm. And I don't stop crying. Yeah. Also the tone in which he says that. Like yeah. he's scared but determined. Yes. It's like it's like the tone of voice that you get. It's the way that like it's like you're kind of like, I have to do this. I want to do this. Yeah, it's, I'm it's fucking resolved. terrified. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. And Charlie is so excited. He jumps up. <laughs> yes. And then, like, he, like, tempers it for a second to make sure that uh-huh. it's, like, really what Nick wants to do. And when he says that he really does, like, Charlie becomes the excited puppy dog of the relationship. Yeah. And Nick says, I know I've been pretty sure of everything for a while, but I'm definitely bisexual. <laughs> That line got me. Yeah. It gets me every time, but especially the first time when he said, like, I'm definitely bisexual. I was like, yes. (laughs) (laughs) Hell yeah. He doesn't want to sneak around and pretend that he and Charlie are platonic BFFs. And, like, to be completely fair, after the way that he, like, literally walked off of the field and grabbed Charlie's hand – it's gonna be hard to pretend that you're just a person <laughs> anyway. It's true. So, yeah. Like you kind of already did come out, Nick. Like, yeah, it was a soft lunch for sure. Yeah. <laughs> but then he starts to like freaking blush, and he's like, "Oh my god, I like you so much, and I love liking you." Yeah. And like that is the corniest fucking line that melts my heart every time. It works. It just works. <laughs> And I would like to just read my next note in its entirety because I feel like you'll appreciate it. (laughs) Nick stands up, runs to the water, shouts, I like Charlie Spring in a romantic way, not just a friend way. And it's so fucking cute. But I also know Ashley is very upset about Nick's (laughs) (laughs) shoes. Okay, so my note says, then, and possibly the most golden retrievery thing he's done all season, he bursts with energy and jumps up and runs, and then it switches into all caps, into the ocean with his socks and shoes on. What the fuck, Nick Nelson? No, 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 no. Uh, I hate this. I hate it so much. But also, if you pay attention, like, 
Charlie runs after him, right? Charlie mm-hmm. stops just before the water, which I think is like such an accurate representation of these two. Like Nick is like the golden retriever who can't help himself. And Charlie's the cat that's like, ha ha. Oh, hell no. I'm not going in that water. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, like he puts the brakes on and is like, uh-uh, I'm not going in there after you. <laughs> but also I have to, I have to give a shout out to our friend Eliza because I watched this and I told her like, you know, you have to watch this. So we were talking after she watched it and we were like, you know, gushing about it and how good it is. And then she was like, okay, but do you know the one part about this that really bothered me? And I immediately was like, was it Nick running into the ocean with his shoes on? And she was like, yes, why did he do that? And I was like, I don't know. (laughs) And it made me feel really validated in my frustration with with this. I was like, it drives me insane. She was like, how did you know that's what I was going to say? I'm like, because it pulls me out of the scene every single time. I will never let it go. (laughs) Uh, I'm not going to say any more because I've already complained about it all season. So I'm just going to let it go. (laughs) Charlie looks so happy. Like happier than we've seen him all season. Mm -hmm. And like thinking about the way the episode begins and then the mm-hmm. look on his face right now tears yeah just non stop i am crying an ocean of tears that ocean is all of my tears <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes and like he so like they're laying down listening to music and nick says i this line about wanting to come out And that's when Charlie's smile starts and his smile does not stop until (laughs) Nick is like kissing him. (laughs) Yeah. Until like you physically can't smile anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, he says he never thought this would happen to him. And Nick says, me neither. (laughs) Mm. And then Charlie, my sweet, sweet Charlie. Oh, my anxious buddy. (laughs) Says, Nick. Does this mean we're boyfriends? Nick's reaction. <laughs> it's like offended. all of us. <laughs> Nick is offended. He's like, um, yes. yes. <laughs> he says, was that not already established the last 10 times we made out? <laughs> it's so good, though. Like his attitude in that, in that line delivery is perfect. Okay, but I will say. In Charlie's defense, I also did this, like, you know, been with with Eddie, been with him for like, you know, like a week or two. And we're like, you know, several dates in, lots of kissing in. I'm like, so are are we, is this, are we, what are we? (laughs) Can I have a definition of terms, please? Right. Um, Yeah. I mean, I have to have the like verbal validation. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm like, I don't know. (laughs) Yeah, what is this? And then, mirroring friend, he asks, why are we like this? Yeah. And then, no, buddy. And then Nick goes right back into that motherfucking water. (laughs) He scoops Charlie (laughs) up like a princess and (laughs) runs into the water. (laughs) You're my boyfriend. I'm your boyfriend. We're boyfriends. So cute. It's adorable. So, so cute. So, and actually, so while you're worried about Nick's shoes, I am focused on my favorite continuity error of the entire show. Yes. Because when they are facing out to the water, the back of his pants, or no, no, the front of his pants are wet like the three front. quarters of the way up. They're wet yep. like up to the crotch. <laughs> yep. But when he turns around, only the hem is wet. And then when they get back to the towel, <laughs> they're back to being two thirds wet. Yeah, yeah. I noticed the shorts too. <laughs> it drives me crazy. That's, yeah. that's what gets me in this scene. Like, <laughs> um, I love that. He turns around and he says, okay, I think we're wet enough now, right? And he turns around to walk back. And instead of putting him back down on the beach, he walks, he carries him all the way back back. to the towels, which are pretty far away from the water, Mm -hmm. which is just so cute. Uh, And then one of my favorite moments is coming up at the the end of this before we go back to the kitchen. Do you have notes in between? 
Um, I do, but I'll let you go and then I'll add on anything else that I have to say. So after he sits him back down, he lays down and Charlie like cuddles up on his chest and he's smiling and just like basking in the sun. And we hear we're staring at his face holding Charlie, but we hear him say, I'm home before we cut to the kitchen. And so it's like he's saying he's home because he's got Charlie in his arms and they're finally yeah. definitely defined as boyfriends, mm-hmm. definitely going to stay together and Nick is home and Nick is happy. And <sighs> I'm just like, oh, it's so cute and so well done that they let that audio like overlap with that mm-hmm. scene. My, my note is that Nick's look is just like, it's like happiness and peace and like, it's like, He's home, like you. Yeah, he. Yeah. It just, it's just like happiness and peace and comfort. And mm-hmm. in that moment, I'm willing to forgive the continuity error. And yeah, the I'm, I'm fully <laughs> back into it at this point. It's just, I, it, as soon as he lays back down, the only other thing is like at the very end when it we get the shot of it coming up. I'm like staring at his shoes, like those are soaking <laughs> wet. <laughs> yeah. Take your shoes off, Nick. <laughs> But we go back to Nick's house. Sarah is like sitting down at the table. Nick looks super happy and Sarah notices how happy he looks. And of course asks how his day was. And Nick says it was really good. And he goes, he gets his N mug again. So yeah. um, I had pod- posited earlier. Um, I was wondering if it was N for Nick or N for Nelson. And I think I'm pretty confident in saying it's N for Nick now. Mm -hmm. So as he's making his tea, he like, it just, he's like, I'm going to do it. Yeah. It's almost like I can hear his thoughts being like, cause he like hesitates and he looks up for a second. He's like, Mm -hmm. I could just do it now. Like I, I could just do it. Like that's the inner monologue that I hear every time. Mm Mm-hmm. All right, do we want to just scene read this one too? There's no um, way I'm going to be able to bring the emotion that Kit Connor brought to this scene. No, no, I am not expecting you to. <laughs> <clears throat> Mum, hmm? <laughs> you know Charlie's my best friend? If you're asking if he can come on our Menorca holiday, the answer is no, because I've already booked the tickets. No, that's, uh, that's not what I was going to say. He's a... Uh, He's my boyfriend. Charlie's my boyfriend. I I still like girls, but um well, I like boys too. And and me and Charlie, we're we're going out. And I just I wanted you to know. I'm literally crying. <laughs> <laughs> That is not Sarah's line. That is me. Um, Sarah says, oh thank, me. oh, thank you for telling me. I'm sorry if I ever made you feel like you couldn't tell me that. And you don't have to say you like girls if you don't. No, I – um, it's definitely not just guys. I – um, it's called bisexuality, if you've heard of that. I have heard of that. I wasn't born in the 18th century. century. <laughs> How long have you known? Well, um, me and Charlie started going out a couple of months ago, but I started liking him way before that. <laughs> I am unwell. Okay. I think we yeah, still there. It's hard, it's hard I, to go on. <laughs> yeah. I um, have a few notes. Um, first of all, I love the idea that if she hadn't already booked the tickets for the Menorca holiday, that she would have allowed Charlie to go. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I also note that before Nick says it, Sarah totally knows, and she kind of like she like kind of looks up like, and I think she like I her internal thought process is okay, it's happening. Let's be supportive, yeah. mom. Like she's like prepared for this, and she's just like, all right, let's mm-hmm. go. <laughs> it's happening. Yeah. It's showtime. When he says that, that oh, that's not what I was gonna say. You can she like fully gives him all of her attention. Yeah. It turns and it's on. Like, so good um and when she says how long have you known and he says well um and then he pauses before he says me and charlie started going out he takes the time to like wipe his tears away in that moment and that was just like "Mm." just just the little touches of this scene are so good yeah i also like un. i find the line where she says i wasn't born in the 18th century 
like hilarious <laughs> entirely because it's Olivia Coleman and she does a lot of period dramas. Yeah. <laughs> and in many of her roles, she was in fact born in the 17th century or 18th century. So I just find it really funny. At, like, and they changed that from the comics. Yeah. Because in the comics, she says 1920s. And so it's it almost makes me wonder if they didn't do that on purpose because it's Olivia Coleman. <laughs> oh, my God. This is also the scene that there's, like, the outtake of where Kit, like, full-on makes Olivia Coleman cry and forget her lines. <laughs> yeah, she's like, she I gets so my words. overwhelmed. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. ugh, so good. Kit Connor. I know. I always think about that scene because I'm like, how the fuck must it feel to be Kit? Like, sitting across from Oscar winner Olivia Coleman, like, yeah. <laughs> legend, icon, literally played the queen, like, all of this shit. And for mm-hmm. her to have got so lost in your performance that she forgot what she was supposed to say. Like, that's yeah. – I just – I feel so many things for Kit in that moment. Yeah. And we know, like, they've talked about how nervous they were, like, being on set with her and, like, she – you know, like – and he he has said multiple times that this is like the one scene that he like really wanted to make sure he got right. Mm-hmm. And it's like you fucking did, bro. You got you made Olivia Coleman cry. Like <laughs> you nailed <laughs> and it. And also like the hesitation and the like fear and stuff is so I'm gonna get emotional. <laughs> Relatable because like I came out to my mom sitting at our kitchen table and like the just like the the flow of his words when he was trying to get it out is like very spot on for me in my situation. So just mm, that's all I'm going to say or I'm going to start crying. (laughs) Yeah, no, it's. And yeah, my note at the end of that scene is Sarah is just so loving and supportive and I'm crying and Nick is crying and Sarah is crying and everyone Mm -hmm. is crying. And then they make us cry even more because even more with this fucking montage. I belong in your arms, and it's just this fucking montage of Nick and Charlie moments from the whole season. And I wrote them all down, did you? I did not. Okay, so it starts with day one in form, their first highs. Um, And then we get the bathroom ink cans shot. And then we get Charlie outrunning Nick and scoring at rugby for the first time when Charlie lets out that little giggle and Nick actually falls in love. Um, (laughs) That scene. Um, And then we get Nick trying to get the snow out of Charlie's curls. And then we get the almost hug at the bowling alley. And we get Nick beaming at Charlie playing at the concert. And then I've forgotten your term, but it's the tackle hug from when Nick comes out. Hug a tackle. I was like, whatever that term was. <laughs> it's Charlie's hug a tackle after he tells uh, Charlie that he came out to Tara and they're kissing. And then it's Nick holding Charlie at the beach back in the present. And he says, Charlie looks up and says, So now we're going to tell people? And Nick looks down at him and goes, Yeah. Charlie's so happy. Yeah. <laughs> It says, Charlie is beaming, Nick is beaming, I am beaming, my heart is full, the end. (laughs) Yeah. My notice, shot widens overhead, background becomes animated in Alice's style, episode ends, I cry. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (sighs) Oh my god. So we already know what my favorite quote is. I have two. Okay. I could not pick. I have a serious one and a fun one. My serious one is actually also don't let anyone make you disappear. Mm -hmm, Um, mm -hmm. It's just – it's so important and so good and it's great in the moment. But also this has been like a favorite quote of mine since I read the comics. But you're my boyfriend. I'm your boyfriend. We're boyfriends. boyfriends. (laughs) Just writing it. I um, love it. That if I – I've been thinking if I were to get any like part of the comics like framed on my wall, it would be that. Cute. page. I love that. If mm-hmm. I had to pick a silly one, it would be, no, I'm going to stay pissed off at him a bit longer. <laughs> That's fair. That's a good one, too. I love that one. <laughs> and then um, I I broke the scale this time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Me, too. I chose 30 out of five. <laughs> oh, I chose 100 out of five. <laughs> Listen, I started high and then I was like, how am I going to get 100 hearts on this little <laughs> on this little thing I'm not post sorry. for Instagram? I'm not sorry. <laughs> and then we did it. We have finished season one. Mm-hmm. How do you feel? I, 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 uh-huh. I have. <laughs> 
Yep, me too. <laughs> well, that just about wraps us up for today. Um, of course, even though the season is over, we are not done. So this is a bi-weekly podcast by two bisexuals, and we will be back in two weeks with a special bonus episode all about the music of Heartstopper. And it's very fun. And it's chaotic. very fun. <laughs> yes. So if you want to follow us online, we are at Why Are We Cast on all platforms. And if you like this, please consider rating and reviewing us as it will help others find us. And thank you to everyone who has been doing um, the reviews. They're all really sweet and they mean a lot. Yeah. And until next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.